What joy it is to be in church this morning. Take your Bible, open the book of Ecclesiastes, back in the Old Testament. I'm going to say a, a few more things about the service tonight. We do have something special planned for the kids tonight. This does not mean it's just for kids. It's for everyone. Um, but if you do have or can get a young person, teenager, junior high, elementary to come tonight, I would strongly encourage you. Kids, grandkids, neighbors, kids, bring them tonight. It's a mini youth rally. So everybody got that? That's this evening at 6 o'clock. I'm going to be doing the video presentation on how we know there's a God. I'm going to offer proof that there is a God. So I'm going to be the, the, the I, I want to say lawyer, but I can sure, surely can do better than that. Advocate for the Lord and uh, in his stead, bring the forth my case tonight. And we're praying for souls to be saved. We got a special guest coming. We got some uh, surprises. And you don't want to miss the service tonight. I think they're planning on running at least one bus to Hickory and another one part into Valdez and maybe over here in Morganton. As many as we can possibly get in here this evening, bring them. It's, it starts at 6, so they'll still be at home at a, at a, you know, a decent time. Uh, you never know. Uh, we're sure glad to see this young man, Joe, right over here. He's the one we prayed for the other night, was in that bad elbow accident. And he's alive and well. Raise your hand over there, brother. Amen. Then had that surgery, and he's all fixed up. And uh, uh, he's now he, well, wanting to play it Ethan one-on-one -on -one, because he can just use his right hand. I just use my left hand on them young boys like that. But uh, uh, he's ready. He's ready to get back in the, in the game. All right, let's take our Bible, turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, and uh, 7, I'm sorry, chapter number 7. Now I'm going to look at one verse here this morning and bring you an unusual message. Um, from the Word of God. Bible don't leave nothing out, and we'll cover this very relevant subject this morning. Um. Ecclesiastes 7.29 Lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright but they have sought out many inventions. Many inventions. I'm going to talk about your cell phone this morning. That's what the, ser the title of the sermon is Cell Phone Religion. I will tell you when it's time to pray. I, 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 I see, oh no, oh no, here it comes. Uh, no, it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be that bad, that bad. Uh, this is not a message against having a cell phone. I got one. It's over in my office. I leave it on my desk during church. So if somebody's, the bus tires up or something, I can, I can get the message. If not, I'll just leave it in the car during church. But it's not a message against having a phone. I've got one. You know, honest to goodness, they come in handy for thousands of uses. This is also not a message if you, or many of you use your phones for business, uh, to make money, to pay your bills, to make a living. I'm, that's not got nothing to do with this message at all. You know what I'm going to talk about, about how that uh, uh, we are addicted and has, has the phone has replaced, in many cases, the Bible in our homes, hands, and hearts. Now, we're living, like it or not, in some major, fast, technological, developing days, to say the very least. There has been more knowledge gained techno on technology in the last 20 years than there was the previous 6,000 all put together. Let me give you some an idea of what I'm talking about. 80% of all the scientists who have ever lived are alive right now. That means the other 6,000 years had 20%. We got 80. Every minute, 2,000 pages are added to scientific knowledge. Every minute, 
of every day. It would take you five years to read what they produced, added knowledge in one day. 2.2 million books are written, produced in this country every year. Since 1970, if, if automobiles developed at the same rate as computers on that scale, if, if automobiles advanced the same way computers advanced since 1970, you could now buy a Rolls Royce for $3 and put eight of them on the head of a pen. That's how much technology has advanced. One weekday Sunday newspaper in a major city has more information on it than the average person would see in their entire life in the 17th century. Their whole life. One half of all medical studies are outmoded within 10 years. The watch, if you got a watch on your arm this morning, your watch is more complex and more sophisticated than a, the main computer was in 1970. An ordinary car, a newer model car with all the computers as in it, listen to this, has more intelligence than that thing they landed on the moon in 1969. In your car, Google processes 40,000 search inquiries per second. Per second. Three and a half billion a day. Facebook has two billion, I didn't say million, billion users. The computer in your cell phone that you have in your lap or purse or wherever it's at right now is one million times cheaper 10,000 times smarter and 100,000 times smaller than the big computer was in 1965. You can hold it in your hand. We have more recorded information just in this year, or we will have in 2020, than they got in all those 5,900 years before this. So this is good and bad. It helps us with some things and really messes us up with other things. We all know where this is headed. You come tonight, I'll repeat some of this, and I'll, I, we all know where this is headed. It's headed to eventually a computer in the hand or in the forehead and wind up being the mark of the beast. That's where it's headed. There is no doubt about it. That's a step in that direction. We are moving toward a one-world government, a one-world monetary system, and a one-world dictator. That's in the Bible in Revelation chapter 13, written 2,000 years before man knew what a computer was. There's no doubt about it. But I want us to talk about our phones just for a minute this morning. And I'm jealous for the Bible and the Lord this morning. I'm jealous for the Lord of how much emphasis and attention we give to our phones and not our Bible. If you believe the Bible, when it comes right down to it, is more important than a phone, say amen. All right. Now, we all know that. That is the source of all wisdom. You'd think with all this great wisdom and knowledge, if the Bible wasn't true, they'd have come out some way to prove it wrong, and they'd have found out something that was better. They ain't proved it wrong, and they ain't found nothing better. It's still the beginning of wisdom is right here in this book. The fear of the Lord is still the beginning of wisdom. So, I want to compare it with your Bible just for a minute. Just give me a little, a little, a little warm-up talk here this morning. We'll come back tonight uh, ready for church. And I want to say, what if? What if we carried it around in our purse or pocket the way we do our phones? What if we took our Bibles everywhere we went? Uh, people used to do that. They keep a New Testament in their purse or they get in their back pocket. You know, that's where all the kids want to put them in their phone in their back. I've seen a couple that, that, that Lord, I don't see how they got them in there. Drove them in there with a hammer, I think. Was, uh, and had to have a pair of channel locks to pull it out. Uh, or vice grips or something. It was so tight. Uh, but they, they were around. What if, what if we carried the Word of God with us all the time? I've done that many times. I took my Bible in restaurants. I took, I took my Bible. I, I know people take their Bible to work and read it on break. I know by, people that take their Bible and leave it on their desk. And every time they get a break, they catch up on their Bible reading. 
Nothing wrong with that, is there? That's not, is it? You say, oh, that's fanatical. Uh, we don't talk about fanatics, okay? Uh, what if we carried the Bible around with us everywhere we go, just like we do our phone? Number two, what if we flip through it several, and I mean several, times a day? I read where uh, uh, that they, the average person checks their phone 77 times a day. 77 times. Bet you'd be shocked. And you know where I got all these statistics? From the stupid phone. That, I mean, you, you'd, be, <laughs> you'd be surprised at how many times. Oh, I don't do that, Brother Danny. I hardly ever, you know, I've heard that. Like you don't watch nothing but the news and the ball game, do. I've heard that. Uh, I've heard people say, uh, I don't do it 77 times a day. What if we checked our Bible every every minute? Uh, Lord, Lord, uh, Lord, what's in here? What's in here? And see the same thing over and over and over. Uh, what if we uh, uh, get up in the middle of the night and heard something go ding? And in the middle of the night, we reached over and got our Bible and read a verse and got a text. That's a text right there. What I just read to you a while ago, that's a text. You know who sent it? God did. You know who sent it to you? He did. You know who it's to? You and me. What if we sent, uh, 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 checked it several times, 77 times a day? Number three, what if we went back and got our Bible every time we left the house and forgot it? What? Listen, listen. You ought to bring your Bible. You ought to have a Bible in your car. You ought to have a Bible at work. You don't know when something might come up. You might have to take it and show somebody what the Bible says about something. And you ought to sure have a Bible here at church at the house of God that we can read it and look at it together and do it. Uh, uh, you say, well, Brother Danny, I forgot my Bible. You know what happens if you forget that phone? Man, you can be 10 miles down the road and say, oh, I forgot my phone. I've got to turn around and you'll break a speed limit, run grandma's off the road, hit mailboxes, and everything else. I had to go back. You gotta have that phone. You got to have it. I'm telling you, nothing wrong. I went back and got mine before. I'm not fussing at you. I'm just saying, boy, if we had the love for that book like that, boy, I said, I can't go a day without my Bible. I can't go to work without my Bible. I can't go. Listen, that's that's what Paul and them did. He took them parchments with him everywhere he went, a night and a day in the deep. When he's on the ship, when he was in jail, when he was in prison, he didn't just pick it up on Sunday and lay it on the back of the camel's back glass where the sun could burn it up all week. He carried it with him everywhere he went, and he always had that parchment with him. Number four. What if we got messages all the time from it? Wise concerning good. And simple concerning evil. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Kelly's been letting up uh, Frankie watch some little old stupid thing uh, called Flippy or Philippy or he called it Flippy or something like that. And on, I saw her saying it's the dumbest looking thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, if, you, if, if you watch that, you would get dumber than you are. Uh, that's what most TV does, dumbs you down. And, I, and, and But she also lets him see some of the good old stuff, that good old stuff like, um, oh, I don't know what it was, that, that Bible broadcasting stuff you had on that night. Man, that was good stuff. And uh, uh, bo- uh, King's Kids are, huh? Keys for kids, and it was old stuff. You can't even find nothing like that no more. And it's where all the kids went to school, and the teacher stood up and gave a moral lesson about not stealing and and respecting other people's uh, rights and their property. And uh, I mean, it's unreal. I said, boy, you sure don't hear stuff like that no more. You don't hear stuff like that no more, where uh, daddy and mama are happy and get along and they're married, and the kids go and they all go to church. You don't hear stuff like that on it. Listen, um, um, can I tell you something this morning? Your kids or you or me. We don't have to know every filthy, rotten, low-down, ungodly thing that's going on out there in this world. People say, well, our kids need to know. We don't need to shelter them. There is no kid in this church that's too sheltered. 
Are you out of your mind? I mean, the kids in there that's most sheltered, brother, no more than their mom, grandpa did when they'd been married five years. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to worry about them kids being too sheltered this day and time. You have to put some, put, put the word of God in them. Put some good singing in. Get, get it from the book. Even if you're on the phone, get something spiritual and preaching. I talked to um, uh, somebody yesterday, and they said, we listen to you all the time on Brother Danny, I said, good. And they said, we listen to you and they named some other preachers, stuff like that. What if we did that? Not on that. What if we treated it like we couldn't live without it? What if we treat our Bible like we couldn't live without it? Now the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God shall man live. There's something wrong with a Christian that has no appetite for what God said. A baby desires milk. Every healthy baby desires milk. If you're saved, something down inside you wants to know what God said about something. And ladies and gentlemen, there, there's, there, it's a, it's, I, I, think, I think it's like... Um, you know, years ago, when people come in, kids been playing outside all day, or they'd work in the garden or whatever, and they'd come in and they'd find the table set there. Mama had supper cooked. And I was all mom and dad and all brothers and sisters. Some of y'all older folks remember coming up like this. And buddy, you was at your place at the table, or or you just got left out. It wasn't none of this. Well, I'll come home after a while and I'm gonna order a pizza and have it delivered. You know, I, I mean, I mean, they're gonna fix tacos and get something out of the freezer. I mean, Mama had one supper on the table, and if you didn't get it, your brother and sisters did. How many of you remember that growing up? Okay, you remember that? Well, now you take a bunch of kids, you take a bunch of kids with them camp, and you give them candy, and you give them junk. You give them Pepsis, and you give them Mountain Dew, and you give them ice cream, and you give them that, and they're almost full, throw up sick of junk, and then set down a nice, you set down green beans and uh, and uh, chicken and biscuits. They're like, I ain't hungry. I don't want that. Now, that is exactly what we're seeing happen among church members today. The devil has so much candy out there. It's not good for you. It's not healthy spiritually. It's just the junk that the devil puts out. All just junk. Don't you know about junk food? I wish some of you is as, as interested in your soul eating junk food as you are your body eating junk food. Then I asked me the other day, they said, uh, I said, Brother Danny, how do you stay in there? They said, do you watch what you eat? I said, well, I watch it when I'm putting it in my mouth. Uh, that, that's all I do. I don't, I don't really, I don't eat, really eat right. I just go a long time for it again. That's your secret right there. Uh, and uh, I, I, I said, uh, no, I don't eat. But you know what? We, we're, we're full of junk. We're full of junk. You're full of junk food. People say, we got too much junk food. Lord have mercy. You know what they're doing in San Francisco? They're cracking down. They don't, in California, they're cracking down on straws. The government said, whoa, straws are bad. We're going to outlaw straws because they're plastic. And they won't, they can't recycle them or something like that. Environment. Listen, brother, if you're in Los Angeles or California, straws ought to be the last thing that you're worried about. When we were taking those classes to become foster parents, and we took somebody. I mean, Lord have mercy. It was Lord, it's like going to college for a year. But it only, only six or eight weeks, but it seemed like forever. And we, they drilled us. We had to take tests. We had to do this. We had to do this. They had to, they, 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 they put fire. We had got to have a fire extinguisher. You got to have a plan. Uh, Molly's bed was in front of the window. They said, no, you got to move that bed. A bed cannot be in front of the window. Why? Because it might catch the fire and you might have to go out that window. I said, she can jump over that bed. Don't you worry about her. And they said, and I mean, just one thing after another thing after another, and I could feel it coming up in me. And I didn't say nothing. And we sat there about another. I could feel it coming up in me. I didn't say nothing. And finally, one day, I said, you know what y'all really ought to do? She said, what? I said, you ought to make it a law that anybody who becomes a foster parent cannot have HBO in their home. Yeah. Amen. Amen, preacher. Don't, I, they made us put a two foot fence around our pool I had, a, I had one this high they said nope can't have foster kids gotta have 48 inch fence we built 
$1,500 it cost me, put a fence around that, and I said, them kids watching that filth on TV is 10,000 times worse than that fence around that pool. Molly, just like a squirrel run over that fence. Didn't phase her. They're, they're, they're worried. They're worried about, uh, I, I'm, I'm telling you people, we, we, we're full of the devil's junk and don't read the right thing. I know what some of you, I can imagine some of y'all get up in church. If I ever call on you to sing, you'll say, the P-H-O-N-E. That's really right. Yes, that's the one for me. I keep it with me day and night. The P-H-O-N-E. Sappho! That's what you ought to sing. Some of y'all need to go to the hospital and have a phonectomy. I, really, it's grown to your ear, brother. I mean, it's, it's grafted in there somehow or another. I, saw, I heard somebody, they're going around, and they're just talking, talking, and I thought, this is crazy. <laughs> I thought, there's a crazy person. Don't know nobody say nothing. And they was talking to somebody on the phone. <laughs> Had something in their ear and everything. And I said, what, what, what? And they didn't even hear me. They just kept walking, zoned out, man, out there somewhere, out there. Listen, you go in an airport, you go in anywhere, and nine out of ten, I mean nine out of ten, are sitting there glued with it just like that. I'm not saying that's a sin. I'm not saying it's a sin for you to look your phone. I, I do mine. But listen, people, what if we did the Bible like that? Lord, we'd be dangerous for God if we had that much desire for this book right here. What if? We gave it to our kids as gifts. Now, get a family plan. Get all of them one. It's amazing to me, a kid's got to have a $400 or $500 or $600 phone and gets a $15 Bible that's cardboard on it. That shows right there what you think is more important. Amen. Don't get mad at me. Listen, I, my phone costs $99. Walmart got straight talk, and it does everything I want. Too much for me. It does too much. Can I give you a little statistic that I got off the phone? If you have an iPhone 85 and update it every time something comes up and keep get some apps... By the time you're 60 years old, you will have spent $75,000 on phone. By the time you're 60. Do the math. Seven, you can buy a house for that. Buddy, I'll tell you what. If you, if you can leave your Bible at church and say, I get next Sunday. You leave that phone, son. My phone will be a ringing. People will be like, I got to get in the church. I got to get in the church. Before the night service. Won't even wait and get it tonight. I'm jealous for the Lord and the Bible. What if we gave it to our kids as gift? What if you had a, all right, kids, this year we're all getting a nice Bible. Listen, this book right here is worth more than this world. Nothing wrong with getting your child or grandkids a nice Leather bound, easy to read, reference Bible that they can take and it'll mean. Don't get one, Lord, the prince, so little you have to get a fine glass uh, to read it and you read it, do it two or three times, it falls apart. Uh, spend a little money on this book if you can spend one on a phone. You got to agree with that, surely. What if we used it in case of emergency? When you break up with your boyfriend, what do you do? Get in the Word of God. When somebody's sick, what do you do? Get in the Word of God. When you lose your job, what do you do? Get in the Word of God. What if, what if you had to pay $80 a month to keep your Bible? I wonder how many people keep their Bible if they had to pay $80 a month. Preacher, I'm just telling you, I just can't. You got your Bible? No, I, I couldn't afford it. Son, I'm telling you, I don't mean to be ugly, but the roof can be falling in. A dead cat on the steps. I'm not exaggerating. And they'll have a several hundred dollar phone. I think some of them's free, but still, I wonder what we'd do 
If we had to pay, if you had to pay $80 a month to keep your Bible, would you write them a check every month? Brother Danny, that's almost a thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I know. I know what it is. I know what it is. Mine's 40, 45 plus tax. And Kelly's is, I don't know. She she got another plan. I'll let her worry about it. She's the rich one. In 60 years, you will have spent $58,000. I'm not saying it's a sin. I'm just saying, Lord, in mercy, what if we looked at our Bible like that? What if you had to put your Bible on a charger every night or it wouldn't work the next day? <laughs> Man, yours would be dead from Sunday to Sunday. You charge it up right before the youth rally and bring it out one or two times. You wouldn't fool with it. You wouldn't fool with it the way it is. And it stays charged up. You got to charge that thing, brother. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's God's word, brother. You don't have to charge. You're getting cheated, folks. You're getting cheated. You're getting cheated. You know why I like to bring my Bible to church? Because this is what you can't do if you're looking at it on your phone. Brother Danny turns this verse. Hold your finger right there and turn to this other verse. Now hold this finger right there and hold it. Now check these verses both together. You can't do that with your phone. The old-fashioned Bible is still the best way to read the Bible. Now if you're blind or have to, you know, you have to hear it or something like that, you know, I'm not saying all that other stuff's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. Look at it on your phone. I'm just saying you cannot improve on your Bible. You cannot improve on it. Well, I'm glad that I don't have to put it on a charger. I'm glad I don't have to renew my plan every two years. I'm glad that I don't get my credit card bill and it says automatic draft Bible 4897. I'm glad I don't have to do that. I'm glad that I don't have to worry about the Bible getting disconnected if I don't pay for it. I'm, I'd hate to think that I picked up my Bible one day and all the pages was blank. And an angel said, you didn't pay your bill, son. God will no longer speak to you. No. Listen, there's people in the world that ain't got no money. There's people in the world that can't pay. I'm glad the book is there and it's free and God gave it to us and it never changes and it's eternal. Hallelujah, brother. I'm glad my Bible will never get cut off. Amen. I'm glad we don't have to work to keep the Bible. I'm glad I don't have to worry about my Bible dropping calls. What if you're out reading the Bible one day? For God so loved the world, begotten son, whosoever can take gone. <laughs> That's static. That's static coming in there. What, wouldn't that be awful? What, what's the rest of it? How do I go to heaven? Oh, you're out, you're out of range. You don't get out of range. Thank God you don't get out of range. So it'll reach them in Africa. It'll reach them in China. It'll reach them in Japan. It'll reach them in, in Nebo. Hallelujah. Up in the holler where I live. That thing will reach. God's word goes to the ends of this earth. Hallelujah. Lord to God, isn't that great? No drop call. I'm glad when I'm called the Lord and I'm talking to the Lord uh, and, and the Lord's talking to me out and say, Lord, you're breaking up. It's always clear. Clear. Right in my head, man. Right in my head. It's clear. Ain't you glad it don't break up? Ain't you glad that when you try to read the Bible, a voice don't come up and say, the person you're trying to reach right now, this has been disconnected or is no longer in service at this time. Ain't you glad some, your phone don't ring? You say, well, I don't know if I would get that or not. I don't recognize that number. And then you're answering it and you think, hello, this is the March for Dimes or something. Uh, and talk to you about 15 minutes and beg you for money. And, and ain't you glad the Bible don't do that? 
Ain't you glad God don't try to hook you and crook you? Ain't you glad you can trust every word in here? Ain't you glad you don't have to, that something filthy don't pop up out of this thing right here? Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. Get the word of God in your heart. Carry in your hand. Hallelujah. You might not sin against God. Put, put some time in this thing right here. It'll shape your life. It'll help you make decisions. And I'm going to tell you something else, and I'm through. There'll never be a time when he says, I can't get service. Never be a time when he's out of range. We'd sing a little song called, I can call Jesus anytime, anytime. You know, he, he is always on the line. When I get in trouble and my spirit's low, well, you know, I can call Jesus anytime. I would see my cousin, my second cousin passed away a couple of days ago unexpectedly. Um, he's younger than me and just found out he had cancer five, four, five weeks ago. Die Friday. I went and seen him yesterday and prayed with him. My cousin sat there and just bawled. I prayed with her. I'm telling you, I was so thankful that I could bow my knee right there with my cousin and say, listen, we can call on the Lord right here, right now, and he's here. He's not going to charge us. He's not going to break up. He's not going to drop the call. He's not going to transfer. He's not going to put us on hold. He's not going to say, sorry, I'll call you back in a little bit. Right then, his ear is open to our cry. The, the Lord hears the cries of the righteous. And I'm glad, brother, I'm glad. I'm glad. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. I thought about that yesterday. The day's coming when we're going to leave this world, people. The day is coming. It ain't if, it's when. We're going to leave this world. And when that day comes, when that day comes that we leave this old world of sin, I promise you there's going to be one book you're going to be interested in, and I promise you there's going to be one person you're going to want to talk to, and that's the Lord. I'm going to say, Lord, here I come, Lord. I've tried to serve you all these years, Lord. I have been perfect, God, but you've been good to me. And the old song says, He'll hold to my hand as over death's river I go. And safe I shall be. I'm glad to say this morning, the Lord will not let you down. He will not forsake you. He will never leave you. He's not going to just cut you off because you can't come up with the money. He's not going to just say, I don't want to answer you. I'm not answering your calls. Ain't you glad that the book is still true and God's still on the throne? And He'll help you this morning if you'll let Now, There's people in here this morning need help. There's people in here this morning who need help. Marriage problems, physical problems, sin, problem with sin, problems with, with, with feelings and jealousy and hate and murder in your heart and no telling what. I'm glad to say this morning, you can open this book. He said one time, I think it was one of them great preachers, I forget what, I won't name the name because I'm afraid I'll say it wrong. But he read a verse of scripture and he's laying on his deathbed and he's getting ready to die. And they said, uh, one of them psalms that says, I'm held, kept, and he said, I'm held, I'm kept. I can go home on that. And he died like that right there. Listen, one of these days, you're going to need something to go home on. You're going to need something to get you across the river. And when that time comes, you ain't even think about the home. They said one time this great king was dying, and he called one of his servants to him, and he said, go get me the book. And he said, what book, sir? There's thousands of them in the library. He said, there's only one book, you fool. Get me the book. When it comes time to die, they ain't one book. And that's it right there. Let's Get God's word hid in our heart that we might not sin against him. Now, your phone can be a great help. You can learn a lot about the Bible, studying stuff like that. It can, it can be used for good. But let's make sure we put this thing right here first. And if you're here this morning, your life's all messed up. Let me recommend. Call on him. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Our heads bowed. We're going to have a song here tonight, this morning, and then pray for tonight. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're having problems.
she's playing softly and you need to get your heart right be a good time to come be a good time to come be a good time to come pray about your marriage be a good time to come pray about your health about your job about your own life be a good time be a good time be a good time Amen. 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 Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, my life's all messed up. What am I going to do? Call on Jesus. Call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. You come right now. You come right now. Come on. Amen. Amen. What a blessing to see families in the altar this morning. Husbands and wives and teenagers. What a blessing. Thank God for that. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. She's playing this morning. Will not be long. We'll just wait a few seconds. Christians are praying. Yes. Hallelujah. Get your heart right this morning. Lord, cleanse me from all the filth of this old world. Put in me a right spirit, Lord. Create in my a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, help me to love you and serve you and do right. Oh, God. Lord, God, help us. May God help us to see revival in these last days. Difficult times in which we live. Dear Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that every one of us take the message to heart. Lord, that we'd honor you, put you first. Let that book be the first thing we read in the morning. Lord, I pray that you'd help us guide our steps all day long. Help us to hide it in our heart that we might not sin against you. Do what ought to be done in every heart and life this morning. But thank you for what you do. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Now we have a few of these left right here. If you'll take these and use them. If anybody got a bunch of these in your car and and from yesterday. Bring them back in here. We've got some people going to Walmart, I think. But uh, we've got a few of these left. If you want to sign up for the Sweetheart Banquet, it's one week from Saturday. We have it here in the church. We're going to have some games and stuff that will help your marriage uh, or your relationship. Um, um, if you're uh, courting and you, you want to come, you, you come on and sign up here and uh, get, a, get a blessing. Come get a blessing. It's all you can eat, Olive Garden, food cooked by Miss Karen. I'm telling you, ever I ain't expert on that stuff because it stinks. But my girls love it, and they're experts on it. And everybody else is too. They said hers, hers is good or better than anybody any they've ever ate. So um, get signed up here, um, and it's twenty dollars. If you want to go ahead and pay, you can give the money to me and Miss Kelly. They're keeping it. And they're keeping it. They've already got some that's paid, and that way you can just walk right in. We're going to get portraits made of all the couples and have a, some games and a lot of fun. That's one week from Saturday night, February the 8th, okay? All right. So get up here and sign up on the list so we'll have enough food for you. All hearts clear? All right, now I want you to go somewhere and pray this evening. Please pray this evening. Go in your closet. Maybe maybe turn the TV off a little while and just get in the closet and pray. God, get in that youth service tonight. These kids are facing a battle, y'all, like we've never seen before. Right. Let's get in here tonight and have a great youth service. We've got some good stuff planned for them. All right, let's pray. Brother Jeff, you dismiss us.